This is my teardown video for my Foam and Nature Blaster. Uh, if you are thinking about building this blaster, this is the video that you should watch so you know how all the parts go together and where the hardware goes throughout the blaster. Um, so before you even start printing stuff, you should know that there's a couple specialty pieces of uh, hardware that you need for this blaster. There's a few specific sizes of o-rings that are, aren't exactly common on the on the plunger tube and the bolt face. There's also here there's a Chicago bolt, a two inch Chicago bolt, which although Chicago bolts aren't the most uncommon thing in the world, um, all the ones that I could buy locally weren't long enough so I had to order these online. These are two inches. Um, if you're not familiar with a Chicago bolt, it's a aluminum bolt. One side has threads, one side has a hole with threads in it, and you can screw the, the two pieces together. Um, so there's that. There's also a spring inside the for the little the, the trip for the ejector that you'll have to bend yourself. And I'll include a clip at the end of this video of me bending one of those springs so you know how to bend it. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to get into it. First, I'm going to show the ejection system and what's going on over there. i have to take this Chicago bolt out. So the, the reason why I'm using a Chicago bolt instead of a threaded rod or some other nut or bolt is I'm worried that over time, the blaster will erode the plastic from being rotated on a, a threaded bolt or a threaded rod. The Chicago bolt is completely smooth, so I don't have to worry about the printed parts wearing down, rubbing against this. So that's that's why I, I think I, I I would suggest this style of pin over anything else. So after you take that out, the barrel comes out. Uh, this is a cover uh, for the front, or I guess the front furniture for the blaster. It's held in with one screw, and then it slides forward. So here we have this black piece, and it is held on with three printed pins. So there's these three black holes here. So I'm going to put those out with a screwdriver. Uh, these do not have to be particularly tight. Uh, also, when this piece of furniture is on, it'll prevent them from sliding out, so it's not super critical. And with those three pins out, then this black piece simply lifts out. And then I just, uh, this is part of the ejection system. This is uh, the ejector itself. And there's also a foam pad for when this thing slams forward. It doesn't, I guess it absorbs the shock a little bit. So why was there a piece of dart foam in here? Um, that is because I'm using dart foam as the spring for this piece. So this orange piece pivots on the rearmost printed pin. So you have to get the pin through this hole. Let's see if I can do that while it's not in the blaster. Like that. Oh, I put it on backwards. <laughs> it goes this way. So the, the little triangular bit like points up Oops. that way and okay it's in so there's a piece of dart foam in here I don't know if you can see that like so and when this printed part if you get it line pushes up the dart foam will push it back down and that piece of foam has been in there for, I don't know, a month or so, and it's it seems like it's doing a good, pretty good job. Um, it's a lot easier to put that piece of dart foam in there instead of having to align like a catch spring or something, and it's like, it I don't know, it feels janky, but it works, so I'm going to keep it. So that's how this piece is spring-loaded. Um, now the ejector itself, you can see this profile, there's two little points. This is what 
contacts the shell in the barrels. So I can get that on camera. Not really. Do I have another color? I do. Here's a black one of the same piece. So it goes in here, it slides back and forth. When you look down the barrels, you can see the little black nubs. And that is what catches the shell and kicks it out. So there is a, a hole in the print and a screw hole, and you'd simply put the screw through the loop of your extension spring. And on the other side, on this hook, there's a hole for a screw that you don't thread in all the way, so you can hook your extension spring on that. Um, when you push the shells in, you have a shell. When you push the shells in, it'll push this ejector down, and then it latches on this guy inside of here, and that's what holds the ejector back. So on the back end, you'll see this this little step part that rubs in the front of this hinge here in this little groove. So when the when the barrels are opened, this will move down and pivot and, and the dart foam will flick it back up. And when you close the barrel, the little nub on the back should push this small orange piece in here up as it slips past it. So this is where that custom bent spring is. It's this tiny little thing. And this is what trips the ejector. Get more light on that maybe. I don't know if that helped. So this, this little guy is held in with a piece of filament. Oh. This shadows. I don't know if I can get it. But yeah, it's held in with a piece of filament. It's an orange piece of filament. So I'm going to push that out. And I need to grab it with some side cutters. I'm just going to gently grab it and pull it out. So there's the filament pin that is the pivot point for this little guy. I don't know if I can get that to focus. So this is the custom spring you need to bend. And it sits in this part. I can do this one handed like that. So the, the little hook on one end sits over the printed part so it snaps it down. And then this this longer piece, this piece right here that's straight, pushes against the inside of the shell up in here to force that little piece downwards. So again, this will cause this piece, when it's installed in the front of the blaster, to move out of the way and eject the shells when the ejector is primed. And then when it moves back up, it'll push this little um, catch or whatever you want to call it out of the way so it doesn't eject the shells when you close the blaster it only ejects the shells when you open the blaster um okay what else oh um so this this piece on the barrels should get the shell out of there is just decorative you don't really need to print it but it just covers up a hole Get this screw out. And it slides forward off the barrel. And it covers the nut for the bolt that holds this hook in place. So it's it's mostly just to uh, hide that nut to make things a little bit cleaner. And also the you, you print this piece laying flat like like this. And there's tapers on the inside of here. It's like a dovetail so that it doesn't push straight forward. You have to slide it on from the front. Uh, that's the bed.
barrels taken care of. Let's get this stuff out of the way. So next is uh, so this, these two pieces of aluminum. Um, because there's so many holes in this front area of the blaster and it's so thin, and this barrel is kind of a, a heavy chunk of plastic flopping around, I wanted to make sure that I didn't cause stress fra fractures in the plastic or like snap off anything. So these, these aluminum bars, I can get them out. We'll get one of them out at least. Yep. They go that far into the back of the blaster to support the weight of the barrels moving up and down. So one thing you might not be able to see in camera is that there is a, like this green piece of plastic and this green piece of plastic is two pieces. And the seam is right here. So this aluminum part goes all the way through the front and part way through the back too. And I was I did it on purpose hoping that the rear piece of the frame will help support the front piece of the frame through this uh, support bracket. Um, as for where to drill the hole, uh, all I did is here's some more of the same bar. I just shoved it in. Not gonna be going in very no okay i just shoved it into the blaster or just do it backwards shoved it in all the way and then used a sharp nail or something a small nail to then scribe where i need to drill the hole and also scribe where i need to cut off the end so let's get this back out it goes this way Uh, next up, O-rings. Uh, these are glued in place with uh, your standard CA glue, cryon, cryonoacrylate, crazy glue, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same stuff. Um, these O-rings are Buna N. It's the material. And uh, when you use CA glue on these Buna N O-rings, the bond is so strong that you'll rip the O-ring before the, the glue will break. So it's 100% uh, it's the correct glue to use to stick these on permanently. Um, these O-rings, I don't remember the size. It'll be in the description of this video. I know that's the same size O-rings that you would use for the, uh, the Spring Thunder Model 5 uh, for these two, you need two of those. Uh, what next? I guess, so I'll talk about this guy. I moves back and forth the the uh, barrel release. So the trigger guard is two pieces, just for the sake of printing. So the front is pinned on with filament, or sorry, the the bottom the the bottom of the trigger guard is pinned on with filament. I can get this out. There we go, filament pin black and then the tr trigger guard comes out and then the front of the trigger guard comes out with three screws so the front of the trigger guard is doing a little, little something extra because it's also holding in the springs and the barrel release and it's using just two standard nerf catch springs uh, just because one of them didn't feel strong enough so they're just sitting side by side try not to lose them across the room when I open this okay so there's the two springs and here's the barrel release so it just drops in from the bottom you can see the from the top it's the hole straight through Okay, so barrel release. There's the two Nerf springs, Nerf catch springs that I'm using in there. To install the springs, I place the barrel catch 
on this front part of the uh, trigger guard and I slide it forward so I have space to reach in there and I drop the springs in. I'm using two springs because one didn't feel strong enough. I'm just going to place them side by side like that and I'm going to gently bring the barrel catch back until I feel it drop into its groove and now those springs are seated in there. I've never had these get dislodged while using the blaster. And I'm going to place this in here into its groove. There. And screw it back in. And I'm just going to screw this in just to make sure I don't lose the springs anytime soon. It is important that the barrel catch is able to move freely inside the blaster when it is installed, but you also want to make sure that there is as little play as possible because the how tightly this barrel catch fits is actually one of the determining factors for how tight the barrel fit is when the barrels are closed. So it, it is important that it is as tight as possible with like as little play as possible so that is one thing to keep in mind you mu you may also need to sand the uh i already put that in there but yeah you might have to sand the bottom of the hooks to get it so that the barrel latches at the very last moment so that there's as little uh, you know, you don't want any play in the barrels when they're closed. You want it to to be firm. It opens a little bit, but, I mean, so that's probably just the, the flexing the plastic. But that's basically, you want to get that as tight as possible to uh, to get a better seal on your shells. Take that off again. Uh, next thing is the... Selector valve. The selector valve is two pieces of brass. It is the 1732nds and 916ths brass. It's uh, it's two sizes that are able to sleeve into each other. All these pieces. Yeah, you want it needs to be two pieces that are tight to each other like that. Um. So what that looks like when it's in here. That one's not coming out. So these uh, levers have two screw holes just so that the levers can't unscrew themselves as you're using them. That's the reason for that. Um, take that out. And then the valve comes apart. So on this side of the valve, the passageway, let's do that is 90 degrees to each other. Yeah, you can see it there. So what that means is when the valve is in this position, only one of the two holes inside the valve will be blocked. So it'll direct the air one way. And when you spin this, the other hole isn't blocked, so it directs the air the other way. So. This is probably one of the, the most finicky things you're going to have to do is you're going to have to put these holes into these pieces of brass. So to help with that, I made two jigs. That's what these are. They have holes for uh, nuts and bolts, the same size nuts and bolts that, that use the rest of the blaster, the, the 6-32. And there's a, a groove so that it'll clamp on the brass. So this one goes in here. Whoops, I lost the bolt. Okay, so it'll get, it'll guide you for where you need to put your holes in your brass. The jigs are also the correct width for you to cut your brass. So you can put your brass in the jigs and then cut it to length to match the size of that block and you'll have the correct length. You won't have to worry about that. And again, the uh, there's two jigs, 
and the holes are fit specifically for the correct size of brass. But anyway, that's the idea. So two different jigs, they're both the same width. It will be the, the correct width to cut through your brass to size, and it will give you uh, reference points for how big you want to make the holes and where you need to make them. Um, what next? Let's put that back in there. Uh, I guess you know, I can talk about these things. These orange pieces on, on both sides, they're just decorative. They're held on with four screws at the, at the front. These screws have to be countersunk. They cannot be uh, button heads. They have to be the, the flat countersunk heads or they'll stick up and get in the way of the, the barrels closing. But they're just decorative. Mostly just so when you close the blaster, I want this to all be one color. That's the only reason that these are here. Um, okay. So the other th part about this valve is, um, so the, the two layers of brass will help seal the, the air or attempt to seal the air so you don't get leakage between the two sizes of brass. So you have something you can spin and change the airflow between the printed part and the larger size of brass. The only way I could think of to stop that from leaking is to actually glue the larger piece of brass into the blaster. Um, so there is a whole bunch of glue. Um, I used E6000 because it's, I mean, it's more sealant than it's glue. But it's just to seal all of the surface area between these, these, two, these two parts uh, to stop the air from leaking out the outside of the valve and force it through the rest of the blaster. So that's one thing to consider is these two pieces are separate when you print them. Actually, I have some, yeah, it's this guy. So you can see where that split would be. And you can see there where this piece of brass would get glued in after it has the holes drilled out of it. And you'll have to glue, like put glue here and here and, and around the holes and everything just to make sure that the air doesn't leak out where it's not supposed to. Um, what else? So that's the valve. I guess the next thing is to talk about what's holding the back half of the blaster to the front half. And that is some thread, threaded rods. So there's three threaded rods and one of them is hiding under the rear sight. So the rear sight is mostly here just to hide this nut and threaded rod. So there has to hide that. So to get this off, I'm going to start with knocking the pin out of the priming handle. Uh, these pins are actually just chunks of nail. <laughs> like, um, yeah, these guys. Oh, come on. So I just use bolt cutters or a saw or whatever I have, hand files, to make pins out of these nails. Because these nails are all 1 8 inch diameter and I could buy a giant box of them. And uh, it's, it's, I don't know. <laughs> A pretty cheap and accessible way of getting uh, pins for this kind of stuff. So now this will slide off. There's the priming handle. This orange piece is just a decorative cap. It's held on by two screws. Uh, now that's out of the way, I can use a socket to get these nuts off the back. So that's one. Two. Uh, I'm also holding this piece down because when I get the last nut off, the spring will want to shoot it backwards. Uh, 
And that's on the floor. All right. Slowly let that out. And now I can take off all of that. Okay. And now we have, you can see these three threaded rods. Uh, my threaded rods are brass because that was the only thing I could buy off Amazon. Um, you can see these pieces just slide over the rod. Actually, just pull that completely out. Uh, here's the the bottom strap, and here's the trigger. So the trigger has another uh, metal pin, the same metal pin used from a one eighth metal rod, and it has two pivot points in the linkage to the rear. So the there's a small section here that gets to this piece, and you can see when I use it, I'm, I'm turning a uh, rotation into a linear movement, right? Like the trigger is pivoting, but this bar is moving back and forth. So when it gets to the back, uh, in this guy, this is the front half of the um, catch block, I think I called it. There's this can't see because everything is black. I don't have a colored one. So this is a, yeah, I'll just knock up the pin. This is again held in with a metal pin right there. And this is this guy. So it's a little cam. So when this is sitting in here, this way and the trigger right, reaches through this hole and pushes that cam up and down. So then it, it transfers this linear motion into another rotational motion, and then this surface here will press up on the catch, because this is sitting in here like this. So if, you're, if you could picture that sitting in there, when the little cam rotates up, it pushes here on the, I wanted this to go across the room, it pushes down here on the catch. And this is what's holding the priming bar from shooting forward. The catch is spring-loaded with a standard Nerf catch spring. There's a small hole in the top of the catch that the spring sits in. And then the entire thing goes into the catch the rear of the catch block like that. Okay, so if you wanted to print the pistol version and not the shoulder stock version, uh, you're only replacing, uh, or you only need two parts to do that. So instead of this, this uh, angled curved piece and this large front of the catch block, I don't know if you can see there's a seam there. So only this this front piece. You replace those two with this. So this is the, the other front of the catch block. It slides on there. And this other, this replaces this guy. So it's, it's simply, you would install these two on there. And again, if you wanted the shoulder sock, you would install this and then all of this. Uh, I should probably show these other two threaded rods. Right? There's two places here for captive nuts and it just pushes all the way through the blaster. There goes my spring. So, pretty simple. Uh, for my spring, I'm using a chunk of K25. It has 10, is it? Uh, yeah, 10, or uh, I think I have 11 here. Uh, coils of K25. Um, and for my plunger rod, I'm using a piece of half-inch round Delrin that I've machined in my drill. Uh, 
if you don't have Delrin or if you don't want to source it, I've included a priming bar in the files that you can print that is specifically made for 10 coils of K25. I don't know how long it will last, but it's an option if you can't get this uh, Delrin or acetoplastic. Um, so here's the plunger head. It has another one of these pins, the, the same one with the nail. And on the plunger head is a O-ring. I think this is a dash one, two, three O-ring. That's the size of it. It's again, Buna N. And I think, um, yeah, it's, it's the same size O-ring as you would find normally on a Calibern, I think. Um, and this plunger tube is also the same size or diameters that you would find on a Calibern. It's, uh, I forget the exact measurements. It'll be in the description, the, the size of the O-rings and the size of basically all of the hardware I'm using right here, but this is the polycarbonate tubing. Um, I think I only used four and a half inches length. Uh, I'm gonna put this back in here before I get grease all over myself. So you're gonna need two of these O-rings and that's because the other O-ring is sitting here at the front of the plunger tube on this part of the frame. You can see the the black line there. So it's at the front of the plunger tube. I just don't feel like pulling out the plunger tube right now because um, it's, it's kind of tight. So I think that's all the stuff in the front. Uh, so talking about the shoulder stock. The shoulder stock has two more threaded rods. I've uh, already undone the bolts on the back here. You can grab this threaded rod and slide it out the front. There's that one. And then there's one at the top. Like that. Um, the threaded rods for the main part of the blaster should all be the same size. The threaded rods for the shoulder stock are two different sizes, just because of the way that they go through the shoulder stock. Um, so the way that the, yeah, the shoulder stock is just bolted straight to this front part of the catch housing. Actually, now that this is out, I can show, this is the difference between not having a shoulder stock and having a shoulder stock. So you can see how similar those are. It's just that the shoulder stock has this long horn on the, on the, on the, on the top. And there's a, the same place to put this cam in. Um, so here's the, the butt pad. If you have TPU, like the, the filament, it's probably a good idea to print this guy in TPU because otherwise this shoulder stock is kind of a little bit hard. <laughs> um, and now for the shell carrier. Shell carrier is bolted on with one inch long 6-32 bolts. A little bit more. And uh, you'll notice that there's four holes, but I'm only using two bolts to hold on the shell carrier. And that's intentional. Uh, the reason for that is if you've decided you want to install two shell carriers, you would use two bolts. I get to get in there. You would use two bolts in one side that would correspond with two of the holes. And on the opposite side, you could use the other two holes you didn't use. So you could bolt with these two holes on one side and these two holes on the other side and mount shell carriers on both sides of the shoulder stock. Um, the way that these bolt in is that there is a tray here. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to get that out, actually. Maybe? The, the final version of this shoulder stock will have a uh, little finger grooves, fingernail grooves to get this out. Oh, there we go. So it's just this tray that sits in a long slot. And in that 
in this tray, there's places for nuts to be inserted. And you would just insert however many nuts you want to have in there. And it'll hold them exactly in place, perfectly in place uh, to put bolts through. So that was just a, a fancy way I came up with to get nuts inside, like deep inside this, this uh, printed model. Um, this notch, this cutout here is just a, so you can use part of the threaded rod as a sling point. I forgot to talk about the elastic on the shell carrier. So here's how that's set up. There is a, uh, there are slots in each of the, I don't know, dividers, I guess, for an elastic band. I don't know if you can see in there. Uh, this elastic band is, yeah, three quarter inch wide, uh, black elastic. You can also find this stuff in white pretty commonly. Other colors are more um, hard to come by. You can buy this stuff from Amazon or Walmart or uh, like the, the fabric sections or online. They're, it's really pretty common. Uh, you can also buy it in fabric stores. It's really cheap. Um, it comes in like, I don't know, several feet long rolls and you just cut it to whatever length you need. Uh, in this case, I think I, let's just take it out and actually see how much I used. Yeah, that's loose. I probably used, uh, about five and a half inches of this elastic and I folded the ends over and sewed them shut so that there is a, a loop on the end that I could put something through. And the, the way that this works is the slots are barely big enough for two layers of this elastic to fit through. If I can get it back in. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it's just barely big enough for two layers of this elastic. And uh, the reason there's a loop on the end is I simply shove a piece of toothpick into the loop, so there's just some toothpick. Get that in there, and now the elastic is too thick to fit through the slot again, so now this elastic is stuck on here. And uh, it should be that when you have the elastic in, that it's taut, but it's still able to move around a lot. And yeah, it's just just that simple to get these shells to pretty much stay in there. When you're inserting the shells, I find it's easier to rock the shells in than trying to shove them in straight because it usually just bunches up the elastic. But if you hold them 90 degrees and then rock them down, they go in every time. So yeah, that's the shell carrier. Um, another thing is there is a left version and a right version of the carrier, and that is because this part of the shoulder stock is not flat, it has a slight curve to it, so if you use the right side shell carrier on the right side of the shoulder stock, it will fit perfectly, there won't be any gaps between the carrier and the stock. Uh, if you if you decide you don't like it on this side, you can install it on the other side, it, it'll have some gaps though, but it'll still bolt on just fine. Um, when you're installing it, the, the back side will have an L or an R to tell you if it's the right side or the left side. And you want to bolt it on so that the letter is upright. So in this case, the R is facing up, so I would install it this way. Not this way. Okay, so this is for... Uh, bending the spring in the ejection system. For for the spring, I am using 0 0.020 uh, music wire. It's very thin. It's very springy. It's also 0.508 millimeters. Um, it's like 
0.5 millimeters would also work if you can't find the uh, imperial size. Since this wire is so thin and doesn't show up very well on camera, I'm going to bend an oversized version of this spring just so you can see how it's bent. So this is the straight piece of wire before it's bent. I'm going to wrap it once around my nail or pin that I'll be using to shape this wire, like so. And I'm going to bend it one and a half turns so that both pieces of the wire are parallel with each other coming out the same side like that. The next step is to take some pliers and get down here close to the coil and bend this spring or this uh, length of the spring 90 degrees away like that and then I can simply cut the wire to length and that is an oversized version of what the final spring should look like and the spring is installed in the printed part it should look like that so that this part of the spring will be pushing against a part of the shell and this part of the spring will be pushing down on the printed uh, ejection release so that it'll always be forcing this down at, but it can be pushed upwards and then be spring loaded downwards so i have my spring steel um this stuff is pretty hard to bend so you want to take a, a lot more than you probably need for the spring like this is overkill uh, I'm gonna be using a vise to hold on to this nail this is the what I'm gonna be bending the wire around so I'm gonna put that in my vise if you don't have a vise you could simply put the nail uh, in a piece of wood like 2 by 4 and then clamp that 2x4 to a bench and then use that to bend. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to probably put the wire, the center of my cut piece of wire to the nail. And I'm going to just try to bend it around while holding it, kind of like putting this end of the wire in the jaws of the vise so it doesn't uh, slip when I'm trying to bend this. So I'm going to grab the wire with a pair of pliers so I have a better grip on it. And now I'm going to go and do that first loop. Okay, I didn't do enough there. So I'm going to grab this end again and bend it some more. That's perfect. So that is step one. And again, all of this is going to get cut off. We only need this piece over here. So for the next bend, I'm going to put the whole of this uh, coil into these side cutters just to hold onto it. And I'm going to use my needle and those pliers to grab this one of the two tails and bend it 90 degrees. Oh, those were caught in each other. There. So there we go. So now I have this 90 degree bend in this one arm. And now I just need to cut this to length. So I don't know. Um, this this part of the spring with the bend in it has to be pretty short because you don't want it to go past the front of this printed part. Uh, this other part of the spring, uh, you can just leave it long and trim it to length when it's in the blaster, depending on uh, how long you want it to be. Just make sure it doesn't get in the way. But yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the small version of that spring. And here's just... For comparison's sake, the larger version that I bent.